It seems that nowadays, almost every aspect of our lives is in some way facilitated by technology and especially the internet. But very few people seem to realize just how dependent we've become. Because in the space of just a few decades, we've come to entrust large swathes of our lives, and as a result, our most intimate and personal details to the hands of just a few large companies that we've evolved to become dependent on. When was the last time that you used a physical atlas or Yellow Pages book to find a contact? That's what I had to do in 2013, because I was legally banned from the internet by the police for just under two years. When I was 16, in 2011, I was involved in a computer hacking group that went on a hacking spree for a few months. We would go on to compromise confidential information from a wide range of governmental and corporate targets, including Sony and FBI affiliates. As a result, I was arrested in the summer of 2011, and I was released on bail for just under two years. One of the conditions of this bail was not to use any device that has the capability of accessing the internet. Now, this was a condition that the police officer in charge set on a whim, and yet it completely changed the course of my life for the next two years. At the time, I was just beginning to start my A-levels in a sixth form college, and I found it difficult to become a properly, fully functioning member of society without going online. For example, even the education system nowadays is built around the assumption that everyone has access to the internet. The biology course that I was enrolled for had the use of the web directly embedded to one of the assessment criteria for an essay I had to write. That meant in order to gain certain marks and pass the course, I had to go online. Although this was one of the more, more minor problems I faced, to me, it perfectly encapsulates a culture of internet dependency in our society. The internet is a part of our day-to-day -day lives. Because I didn't have access to Facebook, I didn't know about any of the parties or events that my friends were organizing. Because I didn't have access to email, I didn't know about any of my homework assignments, something which resulted in numerous detentions. Because I didn't have access to Google, I wasn't able to do the research I was required to do for my essay. But the argument that I want to make is, although the internet has made many aspects of our lives easier. I don't think we've probably thought about the risks associated with becoming so dependent on the internet. This is a chart that shows the market share of web-based email providers in the US. It shows that 90% of web-based email users in the US use the same three web services, Google, Yahoo, and Hotmail. Now, if you think about it, it's pretty scary to think that just three companies have access to 90% of an entire country's and even the world's email communications. Effectively, they know everything about everyone, and they want to know everything about everyone because it's part of their business model. Take Gmail, for example. Gmail uses computer algorithms to scan through all your emails, to figure out all your interests, hobbies, and people you, you make contact with, in order to serve you more targeted and relevant advertising based on your interests. And then there's the innocent looking Facebook like button that you often see all over the web. The Facebook like button is served directly from Facebook servers. That means every time you visit a web page with this button, Facebook knows that you visited that web page. Considering that almost every web page nowadays has, a, has some sort of social media widget, like a Facebook like button, Facebook essentially knows almost all of your browsing history. And they use this browsing history to, again, serve you more targeted and relevant advertising. Essentially, we've sold our data, we've traded our privacy for convenience and not having to pay for services. And many people might say, so what? They're not going to use my data for evil and nefarious purposes, right? And I think that's a naive, na naive point of view to take. I think that you should never trust a stranger with your data, if especially your most intimate and personal data. And the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, agrees. In a published text message conversation with his friends, 
he describes the people who trusted his own company, Facebook, with their data as dumb, followed by a not very nice word. I think one of the biggest problems is that people are also typically unaware of the data that, that they're providing. There's often a lack of consent when it comes to, to the data we share. We have very little control over our own data. Angry Birds is a smartphone game downloaded over 1.7 billion times. It's one of those apps that use your GPS location to track where you are, even when you're not playing the game. Now you might ask, why does a smartphone game, especially like Angry Birds, need to know my location? And again, the answer is to serve you more targeted in-game advertising, because you don't pay for the game. They make money from advertising. Interestingly, leaked documents from the National Security Agency have shown that the information leaked by these applications, such as Angry Birds, are collected by intelligence agencies in order to spy on people. This is an ankle monitor. It's a, it's a GPS device used by the police to track the location of people under house arrest or under parole. It's probably a device that you don't want to have on you because you don't want the police to know where you are all the time because that's just creepy. It's an invasion of your privacy. And yet, our smartphones and many of the web services we use are effectively glorified, voluntary ankle monitors. And we let companies use them in the same way that the police do to, so that we'd have to pay for their services. So when I was banned from the internet, I felt I had some freedom taken away from me. But now I'm back on the internet, I'm not sure if I really regained any freedom or if I lost more freedom. Imagine this, you're having an intimate conversation with your friend about those weird feelings you've been having about your table lamp. And there's a random stranger just sitting between you and your friend, just sitting and staring and recording the entire conversation. That's basically what's happening online, except that it doesn't invoke an equally strong reaction from you because you don't physically see that person. That person is probably a programmer on the other side of the world. So I think there needs to be a proper debate about consent in data. The only people that are responsible for our data is us, and our data represents who we are and our lives. If we don't have control over our own data, we don't have control over our lives. Thank you.